Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. I'm looking forward to our time and this short video. I'll try to keep it around 12 or 13 minutes the best I can. Time just seems to go by so fast. I'd like to help you today to consider what is natural and what is supernatural. I'd like to help you to open your heart to a greater and more tangible relationship with God, to getting answers to your prayers, and to being able to share testimonies with other people. So we always start with Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 to 30. Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I love that part. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, let's keep that in mind because that is the relationship every single one of us desires to experience right while we're here on this earth. A vibrant, tangible relationship with God where prayers are answered and nothing is difficult. You know, we've made this comment. It's, it's simple, but it's just not easy. What that means is everything about the relationship with God is simple because Jesus already secured for us everything that we would need to walk with God, talk with God, experience God, and testify about God. Religion has made it difficult. That's why people that don't have religion, when they begin to hear some of these things, immediately they just begin to latch on and things become very real to them. Why? Because they don't have anything of religion that's going to pull them back to making life difficult. As we talk about what is natural and what is supernatural, we have to place those words appropriately. Because what we're wanting when we say, I want something supernatural, what you're really wanting is something very spiritual where God is involved. But you need to know that when God is involved, it's normal. It's not supernatural. It's not of the super. It's just real. It's normal. It's regular. It's to be expected. As long as you make everything about God something special, then it's like that last example we gave you with the lottery ticket. Then all of a sudden, you pile on millions of other people making it difficult for you to win. Listen, the glory about redemption is that everybody wins a winning, everybody has been given a winning ticket. So if you want to bring the lottery ticket example into play, everybody gets to win the lottery multiple times a day, every single day for the rest of your life. This is what it's like to be redeemed and have Jesus become the answer in your life to everything that you need. So let's think about him properly. Instead of thinking that the world and its troubles and the flesh and its difficulties is what's natural. Yeah, you know, it's just this, the, the natural things of life are just beating my brains in. Well, the natural things of life are God and the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, angels, and the benefits that God has provided through Jesus Christ. Those things aren't beating your brains in. It's just you're behind the eight ball because you think what's normal is of the world. Well, brother, don't you know that everybody I know, even in the church world, is having trouble and experiencing trouble, experiencing chaos, experiencing division, all the hatred that's going on in the world, and all the, you know, the, the struggles of life? Folks, listen, you're not of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of it. As long as you're not of it, come on up and sit. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Come on up and see things from God's perspective. You've been raised up to sit in heavenly places with him so that you can see things as a son of God seated at the throne of God. Hallelujah. No, I didn't bite off too much in that saying right there. I think there's a whole lot more that we don't know about this wonderful redemption that will liberate us continually as we find out. So as I'm looking at Genesis in chapter 3 for a moment, I see um, 
myself saying, what was the more, most normal observance about the Garden of Eden? And this is going to be interesting. Because what do we know about Genesis 3 and verse 7? I'm going to turn there real quickly. Genesis 3 and verse 7. And let's go there in the New King James Version. And notice what it says. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. You say, why did you go there for the most normal experience? Okay, well, what I wanted to say is, when did Adam and Eve recognize that they were naked, that something was wrong? And you would say, well, after they sinned. Correct. Which means what? Before they sinned. Come on, think about this. What does it mean if sin brought in nakedness and shame and condemnation and they were now separated from God? What does it mean about before? Let me read the next verse. Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Was that normal? And then my, my question to you would be, well, how could it be normal if it was a post-sin condition? You say, what? Well, think of the verses right here. <clears throat> when did they know that they were naked? After they sinned. Post-sin. Not pre-sin, post-sin. When did God have to come in the cool of the day to find him? And when did they hide from God in their shame? Post-sin. What does that mean? Well, it's got to be the opposite of pre-sin. So before sin was in the earth, man was very secure. He wasn't naked. He was covered. Why did Adam and Eve always look for something to cover up with? In fact, if you look through scripture and you see where the devil is greatly involved, you'll see that there's naked people. So the devil's always trying to take your clothes off. Jesus is always putting them back on. So if you're in a position where you're naked, that's probably not a good position. I'm not trying to be funny here, but I am revealing to you at the same time with something that's a little lighthearted, the whole idea that we were made to have a covering. We were made to walk in the glory of God. Come on, the great mystery of the church, Christ in you, the hope of glory, is not something that's supposed to be so odd that we just look at it like it's almost too hard to obtain. No, this is the normal clothing that man actually was created in. He was created in the glory. And now Jesus brought us back to the glory. Hallelujah. So when you look at before sin, you see what? You see people that were clothed in the glory, and that is what is normal. After sin, you see God having to come in the cool of the day. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, come on now. We, we, we've looked at some of these verses of Scripture without putting them in the right perspective. We always think God's coming to find us. When God created man, God and man were inseparable. The reason why God came in the cool of the day to find his man is because sin had broken their fellowship. You say, wow, you're really, really stretching that, Jim. No, 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 not stretching that. Come on, you look at the bookends, Genesis, and you look at Revelation. Will we not always be in the presence of the Lord on the day in which we are with him always and forever? Did Jesus not, before he left, make sure that he let us know that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you? What part of he never leaves us and forsakes us means he has to come and find us? Can you not see that what was normal and regular and to be expected, in other words, it shocked them that they saw their nakedness and felt their shame because that was the first moment that there was a separation between Adam, Eve, and God. And what took place next? They began to hide because there was shame. They were afraid. Come on, let's look at this and see that what is normal for you is for God to be real to you, for him to be with you always and for you to recognize him at all times. That's normal. So see, when we use certain words like, you know, the spiritual realm, it's supernatural, brother. No, it's just normal. It's normal. Now, is it super? Absolutely. Super beyond our wildest imaginations. Yes, yes, yes. 
but it's natural. You said, well, that's what we mean. We mean it's supernatural. Yes, but the connotation in which people use that is that we need something out of the obvious and out of the norm to happen to deliver us from this situation. So everybody pray for a supernatural miracle because obviously things that are of that caliber are not regular. They're not to be expected. It's more of a lottery ticket type of a, a situation where we're just a hoping and a praying and we got everybody that we can on Facebook praying with us and then the person and dies and we wonder, will we ever be able to experience this supernatural, miraculous world that seems so far from us because we're literally clicking ourselves away from what is normal, regular, and to be expected by realizing as a spiritual being, my father is just as real to me as anyone in this earthly realm. I love Brother Hagen when he talked about laying in bed at night next to Aretha. He said the Holy Ghost was more real than she was. What does he mean? Well, in those moments when he became very quiet and very still, the Spirit of God was so real to his spirit that it was as real or more real than Aretha laying in bed in that physical sense. Can that be real for us today? Come on, I know we're using up our time here and I want to really get to some things and we will. But uh, wow, are you getting this? Man, share with us if this is meaningful to you. Let us know how this, how, how you, uh, you know, digest this, okay? And, and, and I really could care less if someone disagrees. That's fine. It's always good to be able to, to uh, be able to support what you believe and what you're saying. And I have plenty of support for it. Have no problem talking with somebody if necessary. But these things are so very real. Now, I'll give you a little grace story, just a little update on. So here we are back in, you know, around May or so. Uh, Allie started with Disney again, has just been enjoying thoroughly. And the things that she does are so absolutely fun, making toys. And so she 3D models things that end up in toys in the Disney stores. And so some of you are buying some of the things that she's been able to work on, which is so awesome and cool. So anyhow, some things have taken place with Disney, you know, and in such a way that uh, uh, they've, they've redone some things. But right in the middle of it, God's provided another opportunity. Right when some things came down and it didn't look like because of certain decisions that were made, not her, but the certain decisions with the company of where they were going to locate, you know, their divisions, you know, to do all the work. Right in the midst of some chaos, God provides for her a whole nother company that's ready to hire her. I just want you to hear that. I'm not trying to give too much information about my daughter. You know, she, she wouldn't want that. But I just wanted to use these couple of stories as the means of saying, I want to encourage you when, when you allow God to be real to you, grace and his favor and the influence of God will just go before you, even before you know what you're about to actually experience. The favor of God will go before you and begin to tweak your future so that when you get to a certain spot, already there is provision. Think of it this way. When Abraham was ready to put that knife in Isaac and do exactly what the Lord said, God had already picked out a ram probably weeks before. And of course, the all-knowing mind of God was the day that ram was born, that ram had a destiny on it to be sacrificed and take the place of Isaac, to be caught in the bush so that when uh, God told Abraham, don't put that knife in Isaac. He took him off the altar. Where shall we find a sacrifice? And caught right in the bush, right there. That ram had been walking that day and put himself in that position to perfectly be exactly where grace would have an answer for you to have your provision. I want you to know that God's doing that for you today. There are provisions for so many of you that are watching this that are taking place as we speak, and it's right there in your future. Oh, just be bold enough to laugh at the devil and to rejoice in your father because he knows exactly what you need and he's already got it coming your way. Come on, we're spiritual beings. What's normal for us is, is owning the company having the best of the job, the best of the place to live, walking in this place where God is so real and so tangible. That's what's normal. Well, you can go to Adventures in Grace 
YouTube channel and subscribe or go to Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page and follow us or you can go to jimhockaday.com and find our website. We're so glad to be with you every week and we can't wait to get into more of this understanding of the natural and the supernatural. How do we use those words? See you next week.